Shalom, 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 shalom. Uh, this is Olivier Elchizeng. And um, as we are sharing the word of God, we would like to understand what is the mystery behind the blood. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, let's read this. Leviticus 17, 11. Leviticus 17, 11, the Bible says that, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. The blood makes atonement for the soul. And we know that an atonement is a reparation. Reparation for an offense or an injury. Reparation. And the act of atonement for us is repentance. The Lord said that is the blood, the blood that will make atonement for your soul. To reconcile you because between you and God, there must be an act of atonement. And we do it through repentance. And in uh, Exodus 12, 13, we saw the Lord saying to us in Egypt that I will see the blood. The blood will become like a sign. I will see the blood and I will cross over. I will see the blood and I will pass over. So we understand that for the Israelites, the blood was a sign of protection. Amen. Was a sign of protection. Because the angel of death was released already, was unleashed already to kill all the firstborn of the Egyptian. But for the Israelites, the Lord said, put, apply the blood on the doorposts of your houses so that when I come to strike the gods of the Egyptians, I'll see the blood and I'll pass over. Amen. Amen. So, you understand that blood plays a major role in life. Because blood carries life. Carries life. And here I want to tell you that blood speaks. Your blood has a voice. Your blood has a voice. Remember in Genesis. In Genesis 4, the Bible says that Cain and Abel, they were brothers. So because of jealousy, Cain killed Abel. And the blood of Abel was shed. Amen. So the blood on the ground started crying. Started crying out to God. And it was claiming vengeance. So I want to tell you that where you are, as you are watching, your blood has a voice. Your blood is talking, is speaking. Your blood is crying. Your blood is laughing. Your blood is smiling. Your blood is claiming vengeance. Your blood. Your blood can speak louder than your voice. Your blood can see far than your eyes. Your blood is a character. By the way, your character is just uh, the behavior of your blood. And I remember back home in Congo, there were people who were called by strange names, such as bad or evil blood. Makila Mabe, Mashimabe, which means a bad blood. Oh, bad luck. When you're talking about good luck or bad luck, it refers to a, a, a blood that is blessed or is cursed. Amen. <laughs> so what you have, what you endure, what you are experiencing, is just the result of the voice of your blood. The result of the voice of your blood. Let's read something here uh, in Ezekiel 16, 4 to 6. The Bible says this, Ezekiel 16, 4 to 6. 
On the day you were born, on the day you were born, your cord was not cut. Your navel was not cut. It means you were still attached to your mom. And here, your mom, a mother, symbolizes a house, symbolizes a family. So you were still attached to your family. If today they go down, you also go down, whether you pray or not, unless the grace of God comes upon you and you stand in the authority of Christ and cut your umbilical cord, then you'll be free. Hallelujah. So the Bible says that, no, you were washed with water to make you clean. And here Jesus said that, Lord, they are already sanctified by the word I gave them. May you be sanctified by the word of God. As you listening, you hearing the word of my voice. May the word of God through my voice and through his word start sanctifying you in Jesus' mighty name. And the Bible says, no, you rag with salt, all wrapped in cloth. No one looked on you with pity or had compassion enough to do any of these things for you. Rather, you were thrown out into the open field. For one, the day you were born, you were despised. Six. Now listen, then I passed by and saw you kicking about in your blood. And as you lie there in your blood, I said to you, leave. Hallelujah. So this is the case of someone. His blood was crying death. His blood was speaking about death. His blood was speaking about failure. So you can see that this child, he came to life, or oh, his mother gave birth to this child, but the umbilical cord was not cut. And the way it's described, it's like either the mother died, but still connected, attached to the child. And no one could come to the rescue of this child, abandoned, forsaken, thrown in the feet. No one could look at him and come to rescue him. So this is the kind of blood or the kind of people with a cursed blood. So everywhere you go, people, even if you are so talented, people do not look at you. Even if you know you, you have expertise in what you're doing, people, they will never come to you. They will see you as if you were just a monument. They will see you as if you were like a tree and they will pass by. But they will choose to please someone who is inferior to you. You study and after studying for you to get a job, your blood starts crying. Start making noise <laughs> in the ears of those we interview you. You apply for your work, for a job, but your document, your papers are filled with blood, a kind of blood that is crying failure, that is speaking rejection. And at the end of the day, they reject you. No one will come to your rescue. The kind of blood that when the coronavirus, you are the only one, though you are praying, you are the only one to contract that sickness. But others without mask, without hand sanitizer, they are cool, they are good. But for you, because of your blood, your blood starts attracting, it, it's speaking, it's calling upon other sicknesses, bad blood, hallelujah. But look what Hebrew says. Hebrew says that to Jesus, Hebrew 12, 24, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, there is a new covenant. If you were under 
an old covenant where your blood was speaking louder than your voice. Your blood was busy calling upon witches and wizards in your life in order to destroy you, to stop your destiny. But there is a new covenant. And in this new covenant, the Bible says that the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel, hallelujah, the blood of Jesus speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. If your blood was speaking failure, let me tell you that the blood of Jesus speaks success, breakthrough, health, divine healing over your life, speed and acceleration over your life, prosperity, strength, energy, life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 16, 4 to 6, especially 6, we saw that the Lord said, I passed by, I saw you thrown. You were lying on the floor in your blood, but I said, live. I said to you, you shall live in Jesus' mighty name. Where you were forsaken, you were abandoned. Know that there is a blood that speaks a better word than your situation, and is the blood of Jesus. And that blood is saying, live. Even if coronavirus was in your house, in your home, came and knocked at the door of your business, your career, the blood of Jesus is speaking a better word to you, saying, you shall live. You shall live. You shall live. That's what David could say, though he was going through tough times. Though he was going through calamities, he said, I shall live. I will not die. Wherever you are, please, as you are watching, can you just confess and declare, Lord, I shall live. Lord, I shall live. I will not die. 2020, this is my year. I shall live. No matter coronavirus can devastate, can destroy, can kill can steal, I don't care. Because I know the blood of Jesus speaks a better word for me, for my family, for my marriage, for my career. In Jesus' name, that word says, I shall live and I live, I will live. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. The mystery of the blood. The blood has three functions, major functions. The one, the first one is to regulate. Amen. The blood regulates a good temperature in your body. In your body. So the mystery of the blood, your blood, according to God's agenda, should regulate all the blessings of God in your life. In your life. When the Bible says that you are blessed, then your blood should regulate that in your life that you are blessed and to make sure that blessings are flowing all over your body, all over your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Regulation. And another function is under that same function, regulation or regulating, homeostasis. Homeostasis is uh, a process by which in your blood, uh, there must be a stability, harmony between organs and cells. Amen. And is your blood that regulates that. Your blood regulates that your organs and cells must work together in harmony for you to keep a certain stability. Because where there's no stability, you become sick and you might die. Amen. So spiritually speaking, we see here that your blood must regulate also, must bring a stability in your life. It means... Whatever that is done, that is said in heaven, should be regulated in your life. 
should manifest in your life. Remember, Jesus said, let your will be done. Where? On earth as it is in heaven. So there must be a regulation. I don't know if you understand. Amen. So whatever that is done in heaven should be done on earth. So there must be a stability and harmony, oneness. And this is the, one of the roles that your blood plays. Amen. Can you pray with me? Say, Lord. Lord. As I'm praying right now. Right now cause my, my blood. To bring stability. To bring stability. In, my life. in my life. In Jesus name. In Jesus. Let your will be done. Through my blood. Through my blood. Let, your Let your will be done. In my blood. As it is in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. From today, your blood will never regulate any other thing than what God has planned for you. Than what God has meant for you. There must be an harmony, a harmony between what God has done for you and what you're experiencing on earth. Remember, the Bible says that with an eager expectation, the whole <laughs> creation is waiting for what? For the manifestation of the sons of God. And the sons of God are those in their blood. Whatever God has meant for them is regulated already. Amen. There is an harmony, there is a stability between what God has said about them and what they are experiencing. Praise the Lord. And the, uh, the second uh, major function of the blood we saw is transportation. Amen. Amen. So blood brings oxygen from your lungs throughout your body. Amen. Amen. And the lungs here is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. The seat of oxygen, of air. I don't know if you understand. The Holy Spirit, your blood should be like a carrier of spiritual gifts throughout your life. What I mean is, whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do, want to accomplish, you should find it in your blood. So your blood should not prevent you from experiencing something with God. Amen. Amen. So oxygen is the symbol of life. Amen. Oxygen, the symbol of the breath of life. The symbol of the breath of life. Remember that when God created man, he was just a mass of clay until the Lord breathed in his nostrils. Then he became a living soul. Amen. So a living soul. Remember, Abraham was just a normal man until the Lord spoke a word over his name. It means he breathed over his name and he became Abraham. Amen. So he inserted the H. That H is the symbol of the Holy Spirit, the breath of God. And he became a living soul. He start living now. Amen. A same as for Sarah. Sarai who became Sarah with an H. The breath of God. So as I'm speaking to you right now, let the Lord start inserting his spirit, his breath in your blood for you to become a living soul. For anything that was about to die or that was dying or that died already. I speak the power of resurrection over your life in Jesus' mighty name. Let the breath of God come upon you. Enter you now. Remember Ezekiel? The Bible says that there were dry bones. Bones who were very, very dry. Like right now, you can see that your business is very, 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 very dry. Your health getting dry. In your family, there is dryness. Because of the presence of this coronavirus, everything has become dry. Remember, the Lord said to Ezekiel, son of man, prophesy. 
And as he was prophesying, the Bible says that he called upon the breath of God. He called upon the spirit, the wind. Let the four wind blow. Let the four wind blow. And the wind were blowing. Let the breath of God come and enter. And when the breath came and entered them, they became now a mighty army of God. Oh, praise the Lord. When the breath of God will enter you, when the breath of God will touch your blood, when the breath of God will bring energy to your cells, your blood cells, you become a living soul. You become an army of God. And nothing can defeat you. In Jesus' mighty name, transportation. It means also your blood is able to transport, is able to carry God's virtues everywhere you go. When people they look at you, they'll see what you carry. They'll see the power of God that you carry. They'll see peace. They'll see love. Love. May the Lord help you to carry love everywhere you go. Let love lead in Jesus' mighty name. The blood does not carry only oxygen. It carries also carbon dioxide. Amen? So the blood carries also the carbon dioxide and other wastes. But those wastes and the carbon dioxide, they must be evacuated through the intestine or the digestive system. Amen? But there are some people who are sick because they don't know their body through the blood. They are not able to evacuate the waste and the carbon dioxide. Amen? But the will of God is for you to be healthy. Ah, your blood must circulate, must circulate in your system and bring oxygen, the spirit of God, the presence of God, the life of God, the zoe of God. Throughout your life, in any domain of your life, in all domain of your life. But sometimes there are certain domains, certain areas of your life they don't carry or they don't see, they don't experience the presence of God, the breath of God, the spirit of God. Why? Because there's too much waste, too much carbon dioxide. Amen. And they need to be evacuated. Ah, first of all, it's through repentance. Amen. Amen. Through repentance. Through repentance. Living a holy life. Meditating the word of God. And also showing more love. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I'd like to pray with you before we finish. I'd like to pray with you. We need to pray so that any curse, any waste, any carbon in your blood, to be evacuated. Hallelujah. Amen. Any curse, can you pray for me? Say, Lord, Lord as, I'm today, as I'm praying today, sanctify my blood, sanctify purify my blood from any waste, from any, from any carbon, from any, carbon from, any curse, from any curse. In Jesus' name, in Jesus. whatever curse whatever. that my blood was carrying, blood was carrying. in order to stop my progress, I evacuate it now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. As I repent before you, forgive me, Lord, and deliver me, Father, for whatever wrongdoings. Deliver me, Lord, where I was not able to manifest Jesus. The Bible says, I should put on Jesus the way I put on clothes and where I failed. To show Jesus, forgive me, Lord, where I opened a door and allowed the devil to use me in order to destroy, in order to destroy, in order to divide, in order to gossip, in order to kill. Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. As I'm praying now, restore my life. Restore my blood in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Any evil blood against my progress, I command it to vanish. I command it to coagulate. I command it to dry out. 
In Jesus' name, I speak life. I speak life. I will not die. I shall live. 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 In Jesus' name. In this season. In this season. Of the Passover. Lord. You will not pass me over. You know my address. You know my location. Lord, locate me. Lord, locate me. When death will come. When death will come. When poverty will come. When it will seek my face. When it will seek my address. It will not find me. Because upon me, the blood of Jesus is working. The blood of Jesus is working. I am covered with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Shalom, shalom. We are signing out and see you next time. Amen. We're still teaching or learning on the same subject. The power of the blood or the power of your bloodline, the power behind your bloodline. Amen. Hallelujah. The power behind your bloodline. And we saw in Ezekiel that your nativity or your birth and your ancestry came from the land of Canaan. And your father was an Amorite. And your mother, an Etite. Amen? Amen? And we saw that Canaan, the meaning of the name Canaan, comes from a word means trader. Those who are trading, those who are doing business, like now we can say those who are doing business. And we, we understood that that spirit will be working or playing with your finances and will cause people to be greedy will cause people to be greedy, like we saw the case of Elijah and his servant. Geazi, the servant of Elijah, Geazi, because of that spirit, the Canaanite spirit in him, caused him to try to get money behind his master. The spirit of God that was upon Elijah saw everything, and this is how he was struck with leprosy. So that spirit will always cause you, we always cause you to betray people. We always cause you to rob people, to crook them. It's a spirit that works with greed. Hallelujah. We saw also Judas, because of that spirit, he sold, he betrayed his master. Because of that spirit. That's why we need to pray for God to deliver us from that Canaanite spirit. Hallelujah. And we saw also that your father was an Amorite. And Amorite comes from a word that means speaking bad words. Murmuring bad words. Speaking with a bad spirit. Or a bad heart. And we saw that there are so many people who were born. And on the day they were born, there were negative words, evil words that were spoken about their lives, over their lives. And this is how they were affected. And we saw that that spirit, when you are attacked by that spirit, it will cause you to gossip. It will cause you to curse people. It will cause you to swear. It will cause you to say negative things. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So today we're going to carry on. And the Bible says in uh, the same scripture, Ezekiel 16, 3. Your mother was an Etite. Your mother was an Etite. Your father was an Amorite. And your mother... A Amen. 
So it that comes from a word, that means terror. Terror. Amen? Dread. Fear. So you see that this spirit, its work, or its mission is to terrorize people, to threaten people, to intimidate people. Amen. Hallelujah. So it will intimidate you. And to intimidate, you know, in that word, intimidation, there is a word, timid. Amen. Timid. Timid means uh, to, be, to be afraid. Okay? To be afraid. So anytime that spirit comes, it will bring fear in you. Fear in you. Hallelujah. It always brings fear in you. It will bring terror. And you run away from your destiny. And you see that in Genesis 3, the first time that spirit manifested, it was in the Garden of Eden. You see, the Bible report says that Adam and Eve, they heard the voice of the Lord and they did something. What did they do? Huh? They hid themselves. Why? Because they were afraid that spirit, the Eatite spirit, started to operate since that day. They said, we heard your voice. That's why we eat ourselves. So when you are attacked by this spirit, you start hiding yourself. I'm telling you. The Bible says that we did not receive a spirit of fear, but a spirit of courage and sound mind. Amen. So anytime you experience fear, it's because you are attacked by that spirit. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. What are the things that makes you fear? What are the things that makes you be afraid? There are people who are afraid of the night or the dark. Amen? There are people who are afraid of the dark. Are you afraid of the dark? Okay, let me say this and you, you understand that it's true. It requires deliverance. So ladies... They will agree with me that anytime they see a mouse, I, I don't know, they have to run away. They will jump, I don't know, a mouse. Amen? Yes or not? Yes. It's not normal. If you are afraid of a mouse, what about a demon? If you see a demon, a demon is even uglier than a mouse. So what are you going to do? So you're going to die. You see a butterfly, you run away, start sending fire. No, it's just an insect. Amen. Fear. Hallelujah. May God deliver you from your fear in Jesus' mighty name. You see, the Israelites, they were afraid of taking possession of their land. Why? Because the way, the way, as they were walking, the way was not easy, was too hard. They were afraid of the giants, of the land where they were supposed to enter and to take possession. Remember, our vision for this year is taking possession. No matter coronavirus is uh, hacking, tracking, killing people, no matter the, this pandemic, no matter the lockdown, we have to take possession of our land. Amen. Comes fire, comes snow, comes rain, comes wind. I don't know. We're going to take possession of our land in Jesus' name. And you're going to take possession. That's why in this month of May, the fifth month, the month that expresses God's grace. Because by yourself you cannot, I'm telling you. But by the grace of God, you can stand. And you can be able to take Whatever your enemy has stolen from you, there is a land to possess in Jesus' mighty name. Say, so there is a land to possess. This year, this year, comes rain, comes snow, 
I will possess my land. In Jesus' mighty name. By the grace of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Because the Lord is always standing by my side. That's why I cannot be shaken. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. You cannot be shaken. You cannot be shaken. Even when this Hittite spirit manifests, you just say, get behind me, you Hittite spirit. Fear does not come from God. Thank you, Lord, for the spirit of courage. You start singing unto the Lord. You start praising Him. You start laughing. You start dancing. Oh, before you know it, the Lord will manifest. Hallelujah. And the atmosphere will change. The atmosphere of faith. Hallelujah. So this spirit will always come and steal your faith and replace it with fear or doubt and belief. That's why you see there are so many people who are thinking that they are praying out of faith, but it's out of fear. You have to see the way you pray when you are alone. No power, no light. The way you'll be praying, oh Lord, when you hear a, a, a sound or a, a funny noise, the way you speak in tongues, you are so afraid, my brother or my sister. You are so afraid. Amen. When you hear, you know, sometimes it happens also that I'm praying and then I just hear a sound and <laughs> you jump. And then you say to yourself, thank you, Lord, because I know one of your angels is just hammering a demon somewhere. That's why I can hear that sound. It's the sound of a hammer that your angel is using to destroy a demon. And I believe in that. And it will become so in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, you are praying and the door was not closed. And you just feel a wind, a soft wind. While you were praying, concentrated, focus. <laughs> Amen. You hear a sound of the door opening. Your attitude can determine either these are angels working or demons. When you hear like that, the first thing to do is believe in positive things. Believe in the word of God. Thank you, Lord, for your angels. These are your angels are entering now. Thank you, Lord. I welcome your presence. And you shift, you change now your way of prayer. But if you are afraid, you see, when the door opens, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, Father, Lord, I cast this demon out. You don't even see him. In Jesus' mighty name, we start calling. Mama John, where are you? <laughs> hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Are we together? The eat that spirit, remember that it will come and intimidate you to make you become timid, to frighten you. And to intimidate is also to cause someone to feel fear in order to control him. Amen. In order to control him, in order. So you cause him to do what you want because you are intimidating him. He will feel inferior to you. You see, an animal can intimidate another animal if that animal is smaller than him. Just by showing his teeth, the smaller animal will be afraid and will surrender. So when you see someone coming to you with a knife, with a gun, because of that gun you sing, it can intimidate you. So I don't know what you sing that intimidates you. Maybe it's coronavirus. Anytime you see people with their masks and gloves, so you are afraid. Even the way you are walking on the street, so you are so afraid. 
Coronavirus has intimidated the whole world. Amen. Churches, they are afraid to open. <laughs> I remember I was, uh, I was sharing with Major. There are people that we know. Somewhere in some countries, they've allowed them to open churches, but only for one hour. So some pastors are happy and others, uh, they are doubting. The truth is not because of doubt, but it's because of fear. Amen. Because of fear. If you know that whatever you are doing, you are under the mandate of God, why would you be afraid? Amen. If you know that you have received the mandate of God, you're not going to be afraid. That's why we need to pray first before we open the church. We pray. If God says, I am with you, then we'll go. No matter what, we'll go. But if the Lord did not say anything, don't engage yourself. Hallelujah. Fear. The Bible says that twice a day for 40 days, Goliath, was intimidating the Israelites. Twice a day. For 40 days. So 80 times. Amen. And you know, number 40 symbolizes trial. Test. That I can see a woman will go, we undergo a, a time of trial season for almost, almost 40 weeks or nine months, carrying a baby without knowing if that baby will come out after nine months or the baby will die along the way. So it's not easy for a woman by that season, by that moment. It's a moment where this spirit attacks most women at that season. Because you don't know anything can happen as you are sleeping. Anything I remember, the way this woman, she was expecting a baby. The time came for her to deliver the baby, but there were no contractions. Amen. There were no contracts. And she, she was waiting and she waited for something like two weeks. The contraction will start and then stop. So she waited for two weeks. She went to the hospital, nothing. They tried to inject things, give her tablets, nothing. Until she called. We prayed the first day. And then we said, we pray and you observe. And after we've prayed, the contractions now um, increased or they multiply now so after four days she called again i saying now i can feel the contraction but there is a level where the contraction need to, to to reach in order to cause the baby to come out of the womb amen so that is the only thing that was missing. And I said, okay, let's pray. It was over the phone. We don't even know how that lady looks like. Never met. We prayed with her over the phone. It was around 11, 11 50 something at night. And we decree and we declare over a life according to the way the Holy Spirit was leading us. I said, listen. In the morning, this morning, today, as you are starting a new day, your baby is coming. Amen. And a day after, she sent a message, a man of God, praise God, because after we spoke, this is how the contraction came, and they took her to the hospital, and she gave birth to a baby boy. But before that, she was attacked by an Hittite spirit. She was so afraid. She thought that maybe she could have died with the baby as well. There were contractions, but there were no, the, the contractions were not enough to cause the baby to come out. Amen. 
So most of the time, this is what we, we encounter. Situations where you have means, but what you want to get, you cannot get. Because there's no, the kind of contraction you need for whatever you want to manifest. And because of that, you'll be afraid. And you see, fear, it will cause you to work more on your effort or to focus more on your effort than to focus on the trust of God. Amen. You lean more on your effort than to trust God. But faith leans more on the trust in God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. So let's pray before I just introduce what you're going to see next week. <coughs> Eat that spirit. So the Bible says that twice a day for 40 days and 40 nights, Goliath, that giant, he will come out and start cursing the Israelites. Start speaking bad words in order to discourage them. And they were discouraged. They were afraid. Just one man to threaten the whole nation. Maybe just a small witch, a, sm a very small witch, very short, threatening the whole family just because of a mistake. Just a small sin, a small covenant that has affected your family, the entire family. And the family started living in fear. I know there is a family where people were dying like nobody's business. And it has caused those people to live in fear because you don't know. Anytime someone feels sick, falls sick, and people are afraid. And you see people start praying out of fear, not out of faith. When you pray out of fear, there are signs. Amen. There are signs. Jesus was in the boat. And the storm rose. The wind was blowing. And they thought that it, they could have died. Just imagine, lack of faith. They were with the Messiah. Yet, they were crying like babies. They were afraid. I can tell you, Jesus will never allow you to die before your time. Unless, if you don't pray enough. Unless, if you don't abide in his word and his word in you. Unless if you don't align yourself with the word of God. That's it. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now I want to pray. Who is that giant? That Goliath? Who is threatening your life? Today he must fall. Today you must cut his head. To cut off his head. To chop it off in Jesus' name. So that that system will not affect you. Pray with me. Say, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, as I'm praying, locate any Goliath in my life. Wherever he's operating from, I arrest you in Jesus' name. I command you to fall. I cut off your head. In Jesus' name, you no longer threaten me. I'm no longer afraid of you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, locate any Hittite spirit that is causing me to be afraid of events, to be afraid of the night, to be afraid of the dark, to be afraid of my future, to be afraid of failing. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, you eat that spirit. I arrest you. I bind you. I send you in the pit. You Amorite spirit. 
you Canaanite spirit, I arrest you, I bind you, and send you in the pit. Never come back again. Lord, I pray for my heart. Give me a heart full of courage, full of the Spirit of God. In Jesus' mighty name, I cast out any fear in me. In Jesus' mighty name, I am free. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to tell you this. As we are praying against the spirit of fear, then we'll be, we, we will be put to test. Amen? We'll be tested. It means there will be a time where you'll be praying, maybe in the dark, or you are alone, and the Holy Spirit tells you, go outside. Don't rebuke that spirit that that does not come from God. No. It's God testing you. Don't be afraid. Go. Amen. You'll be alone and you feel like you are alone. And as you know that you are alone, but you, you hear a sound, a funny sound, a funny noise. How are you going to react? So your attitude will determine if you are really afraid or you have faith in God. God bless you. Hallelujah. For now we bless you. We keep on praying for God to remove any restriction, to remove any spiritual lockdown over your life, over any domain of your life, for you to be free and to serve God in freedom. Amen. So we pray for you. We cover you with the blood of Jesus. You will not fall, especially for this month of May. May you operate under the grace of God at another level in Jesus' mighty name. If you have never experienced the prophetic, the Lord, under this grace, a great grace, amazing grace, it will help you. Oh, it will take you to another level where you start experiencing the prophetic. And also, if you don't know how to ask for forgiveness, you don't know how to forgive, you don't know how to talk to someone about Jesus, to win souls, you don't know how to connect with God, you don't know how to live a holy life. There is a grace, a particular grace that can, can change your life, can turn your life around so that you might see, you might experience the life of Jesus to the full. He said in his word, I have come so that you may have life to the full. In John 10. Amen. May you encounter that kind of grace that can take someone who is living in sin, causing to repent and to receive the revelation of Christ by receiving Jesus in his life and to be saved. Receive that kind of grace in Jesus' mighty name. May you encounter that kind of grace that can cause a barren woman to become fertile and start giving birth. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. May you encounter that kind of grace that can take someone who is sick and change, transform, remove that sickness and give him healing. Receive that grace in Jesus' mighty name. That kind of grace that can take a, uh, a family that is scattered already and to unite them and to make them become servants of the most high God. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. Amen. The kind of grace that will cause you when you pray, heaven to hear. When you pray, heaven will open. When you pray, you call upon the name of Jesus. Jesus will come down on the scene. Hallelujah. Amen. May you receive that kind of grace that can cause you to receive things that goes beyond your mind, beyond your imagination. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. The grace that can cause a door that was locked for years, for decades, and to open it just by a single prayer. Receive that grace in Jesus' mighty name. A, the grace that can cause people to come from far, to look for you and to bless you in a way that you have never imagined. That kind of grace that was upon Jesus that caused the major who came from far with gold and so many treasures. They came with those treasures for the baby 
Jesus, a baby, he didn't even know how to use gold. May you receive that grace in Jesus' name. Under this grace, the Lord will give you things, even if you don't know how to use them. But because of his name, for the sake of his name, because he loves you, he will give it to you. You have never seen in families where a child can be playing with something, any item, let's say even the watch, a very expensive watch of his father. Amen. Because it belongs to the father and the son can play with it. Of course, the father will be, uh, uh, will be watching over so that he may not break it. You will not break. You will not break your blessings. You will not spoil them. You will not destroy them. You will not waste them. Because the grace of God upon you will also help you to keep them. Hallelujah. May you receive that kind of grace where the Holy Spirit will visit you in a manner that you have never imagined and take you to the next level, take you to your next assignment and you start prophesying, you start healing, you start delivering people for the name of Jesus and for his glory to manifest. The Lord will use you because of that grace. God bless you. Shalom, shalom. We love you and we we'll meet again next week. Praise Jesus. Amen. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you for joining us and from wherever you're watching us. We would like to bless you and to cover your family, to cover your project, your document. And we pray for the hand of God to come upon you so heavily in order to open doors and to keep you safe in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I will not fear anything. I will stand still because as the wind of God will come, that wind will carry me. Amen. It will carry me away. And I'll start soaring like an eagle. I'll start flying like an eagle on the wings of the winds of God. He will take me where he wants me to go. Because I know where he will take me, this is where I'll be safe. As David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of, of death, I'll fear no evil. Amen. Why? Because the staff of God comforts me. Because the hands of God keeps me safe. The name of Jesus, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. If you are righteous, then you are allowed to run into it. If you are not righteous, you might run, but the door will not open to you. But I thank God because you have been justified by the blood of Jesus and you are working on your character, you are working on your heart so that you can stand before God in the right position, in the right posture. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Let's turn our Bibles in Mark 4. Mark 4, 35 to 40. Mark 4. The Bible says that on the same day, on the same day of what? It was on the same day Jesus gave them so many parables. On that same day, the Bible says, evening came. Hallelujah. Amen. He gave them the power. We are not going to go through the parables. There were four parables that Jesus gave them. Amen. The parables of the seed, the great seed, the sower, uh, the parable of the lamp under the basket. So he gave them, you see that he was talking more about the seed, 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 seed. Then evening came. What does it mean? It means that any time the Lord will speak to you, remember that there will be an evening that will come. Amen. An evening, it is a time of darkness. Partial darkness, not total darkness, because night it's a time of total darkness. But evening, you can still see. Amen. 
You can still see, you can still have faith. But at night, when night time comes, in the spiritual realm, there's no faith. Your hope will be vanished. You have heard people saying that I was going through my darkest time. That is the moment where people are suffering. Hallelujah. So evening comes, it is a time of challenge or challenges. A time of test. So evening came after receiving a teaching. Evening will always come after you have received a prophecy, a revelation from God. Because you need to go through a test. So evening came. And Jesus told them, let's cross over to the other side. Let's leave this side. Let's leave this land. Let's go to the other side, on that other land, because we need to conquer that land. Amen. Amen. And when he was teaching them, he was in a boat. And the Bible says that the disciples, they took him on his own boat. So it's not Jesus who was leading that boat, but the disciples. Hallelujah. What does it mean? It means that there is a place where God wants you to, there is a place where God wants to take you. Amen. So, but the Lord is there. He knows where he's taking you, but you are the one who will be walking, not him. Hallelujah. He wants you to walk. He wants you to make your own efforts. So you need to carry, you need to push that boat. You need to pedal. It's not Jesus who will be pedaling. You are the one to pedal so that the boat will be moving. Amen. And I can tell you, as you be walking, it means you need to walk with your promises. You need to walk with the revelations. Jesus was God's revelation. Jesus is God's promises. Amen? Amen? And Jesus was a promise to the disciples. They were waiting for the Messiah until he came. So uh, Jesus among the disciples, or to the disciples, toward the disciples, it was God's promise that was fulfilled. Amen? So you need to push, you need to walk, you need to pedal so that you can reach your destiny with Jesus in your boat. And your boat can be defined as your heart. So don't leave Jesus out of your heart. You need to carry him in your heart and walk with him because he is the promise of God for you. And the Bible says that. He said, Let co let's cross over to the other side. Amen. And this is how now, listen, they receive a revelation, a, a message. They receive a promise. Let's go. Oh, it's Jesus who gave them that order. Let's go. So, based on the word of Jesus, they obeyed, but they never knew that something will happen on the way. It's not because you receive a revelation or a promise or a prophecy from a mighty man of God that everything will be easier, will happen just like on a silver plate. There will be a challenge, there will be a test. Amen. Amen. And the Bible said that as they were going, they were moving. Everything was fine until, until, say with me, until, there will always be an until somewhere. Always. After God has done something great for you, there will be an until something happens. Amen? Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. And the Bible says that as they were moving, a great windstorm arose. There will be, there will always be something that will rise in order to fight, 
to challenge your faith. Because that wind rose not because of Jesus, but it was because of the disciples. Amen. Amen. And you see the attitude of Jesus. The Bible says that he was sleeping in the stern. He was sleeping in the stern. Amen. And he had even a pillow. <laughs> it means he was really sleeping. Indeed, he was sleeping. So sometimes, when you are going through tough time, you pray, you don't receive any answer. You see like Jesus is sleeping. But I can tell you, even if Jesus is sleeping in your life, he is still in control. Hallelujah. He's still in control. And, you know, there's something that I really like with God. Because there were too much wind, too much noise, too much sound, confusing sound. But still, Jesus was sleeping in the turn on his pillow. Amen. Amen. But when the disciples, they started crying, Master, Master. So the voice, or the sound of the voices of the disciples was able to wake Jesus up. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. Can you imagine that any time when you cry, you say, Lord, I can tell you, he will hear. He will wake up. It's just a way of saying, God cannot sleep, right? But Jesus, God on earth, was able to sleep. Because he was human like you and me. He was a human being like you and me. But Jesus who is in heaven does not sleep, does not slumber. Because he's in control. Even if we see this coronavirus killing, destroying, God still in control, I'm telling you. That's why you cannot, you cannot die like a chicken. You cannot die like, like a dog. No. Hallelujah. Amen. So here we want to understand this. Even if today I don't receive an answer, still God is in control. It's just a matter of time. When he will stand, he will be able to stop any storm. He will be able to stop any storm. And he will speak to that storm. Silence. Be still. Amen. Amen. Peace. He will speak. He will say a word. And my life will change. Just a word from God can change your entire life. Hallelujah. Amen. They were screaming, Master, Master, do not care. The fact that we are perishing. Who told you that you are perishing? According to what you see, you think that you are perishing. If your eyes were opened, you could have seen what is happening in the spiritual realm. You are not alone. Say, I'm not alone. I'm not alone. I am not alone. I'm not alone. Praise Jesus. Amen. You are not alone. Maybe your boat is sinking. Your business is sinking. When you look at your family, your family is sinking. When you look at your finances, especially in this season of confinement, so many people, their finances are sinking. Maybe at your workplace, you don't even know. There is no more hope if you can go back to work again. You are sinking. But let me tell you this. You will not die. Don't look at the wave, the way the waves are beating your boat and start filling up your boat with water. When you look at that water and you say, Lord, I'm going to sink. You are not going to sink because this is the time. Jesus is about to wake up now in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. No matter this confinement, no matter coronavirus, no matter whatever you're going through, Jesus, it is time for us to stand and scream. For us to stand and shout. For us to stand and cry. Cry out to God. For Jesus to stand up, to wake up. It is time to pray, Lord, arise in my life. Arise. Enough is enough, Lord. Remove this spiritual confinement over my life. 
Remove it. There are so many people, they might lose their jobs, I'm telling you. Because we might think that, yeah, it's just a, a normal confinement. But for so many, it's like the devil has put everybody, the whole earth, under a spiritual confinement. We need to come out. That's why the Lord gave us this vision. We need to take possession of our land. Because our land has been confined. It's been restricted. No one can enter like in Jericho. No one is going in. No one is going out. We need to take back what belongs to us and remove any confinement. And before that, we need to cry out to God. Lord, arise. Wake up, Jesus. Wake up, Jesus. I don't want to perish. Wake up. Because I can see so much waters all around me. Hallelujah. You know, when someone dips himself in the waters, you see that all your five senses, they will not work properly. Your sight will be limited. No more smell. Amen. And you become very sensitive, your touch. So you cannot hear everything properly. So because water is coming in your boat, you cannot smell. You cannot discern if it is a good business or a bad one. A wrong one or a good one, you don't know. You cannot discern and see if the person is coming with that tender is a right person or a wrong one, you don't know. You cannot see far. The eyes of your heart are closed. Maybe for you, you are not experiencing evening time, but you are already experiencing night time. You know, at night, people are sleeping. At night, normally the way God created things, established things, is for you to sleep at night, for your body to rest. So while you, you are looking for a job, your body is resting. There is no way to work. While you are looking for, you, you are about to start a business, but your partners are sleeping. People are promising you, they'll give you this or that, but they're still sleeping and you're still waiting for them. You are waiting for tomorrow morning for them to wake up and tomorrow morning can come maybe after two years or three years. This is what is up. These are the realities of the spiritual realm. May God command your day to come. Amen. By the way, the Lord has ordained already for your day to come. As he said to Job, have you commanded your day? So you are the one now to cry out to God and say, Lord, I command my morning to start now. Let my morning start now. Hallelujah. May your joy, your joy comes in the morning. And your morning is not when you see the sun coming. Your morning is when God visits you. Hallelujah. When there is an encounter with God, we want to pray as a Lord, change now. My night into morning. Amen. And my morning into joy. Morning of crying. I'm talking about crying. Amen. Into joy. There is a song from Hill Songs. Yes. He has turned my morning into dancing. Amen. My sorrow into joy. May the Lord change your night time into daytime. Your evening into morning. For you to rejoice. Are you ready to pray? Yes. Are you ready to pray? Yes. So raise your voice and say, Lord, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Thank you for this revelation. As I'm praying, as I'm praying, locate my life. Locate my life. Lord, I have crying so much. I have crying so much. Now enough is enough. 
Come and change my evening into morning. Change my crying into joy. Come and change everything that is dark into light. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. name. Let my joy come in the morning. And this is my morning. My time of visitation. Come and visit me, Lord. I need an encounter with God. An encounter in my morning time. Lord, come and change my evening in morning. Change my evening into morning. In Jesus' name. Change my evening into morning time. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Where I was crying, I'll cry no more. Because this is the morning time. Where I was in sorrow, I'll be no more in sorrow. Because this is my morning time. Thank you, Jesus. This is my morning hour. This is my morning hour. This is my morning hour. The hour of my visitation. The hour of my healing. The hour of my prosperity. The hour of my deliverance. The hour. The hour of God. Lord, I need you. Glorify your name in my life in Jesus' name. Pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. This is a season, this is a time where you need to seek the face of God. You need to have an encounter with Jesus. You need to hear from God what God is saying to you, particularly to you. In this season, what God is saying. To the disciples, he said, let's cross over to the other side. Because he said so, he said, let's cross. So there were no way for the wind, for the storm to stop them because the word of God came and said, let's cross. So they had to cross. There were no way. What is it that God is saying to you? If you haven't yet received any word, but take this word as yours. The Lord is saying, let's cross. So no matter the confinement, you have to cross. Amen. Amen. You have to cross. See yourself after this time of confinement. See yourself doing something with God. See yourself. This is me. What will you do in June? What will happen in July? What will happen at the end of this year? You need to see it now. I pray for you for God to open the eyes of your heart. I pray for your heart to be connected to the throne of God. I pray even for your character because sometimes your character can prevent you from experiencing God's glory, God's power. So I pray for your character. To help you partake of what God has planned already for you in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for your blood. Because sometimes your fight is what comes from your blood. I pray for your blood. Any strange element in your blood that does not love God. That always take you away from God. I command those elements to die in Jesus' mighty name. I'm speaking the word of God to any foundation of your family. Where you are coming from. There is a foundation that does not want you to cross certain lines, restrictions. I command to those foundation to be Destroyed right now in Jesus' mighty name. I destroy them. I overthrow them in Jesus' mighty name. And set you free. Say, I am free. 
I am free. I am free. Through the power of the blood of Jesus, I am free. Through the power of the resurrection of Christ, I am free in Jesus' name. Where people are saying, there is a casting down. I will say, there is a lifting up in Jesus' name. Because the Lord is with me. Because the Lord is with me. No matter coronavirus, no matter the confinement, no matter any restriction in this world, if I have to travel, I will travel. If I have to buy, I will buy. If I have to work, I will work. If I have to succeed at school, I will succeed. I will make it in life. I will produce. I am fruitful. In Jesus' name, I bless my hands. Look at your hands. I bless my hands. I bless my hands. The work of my hands are blessed. In Jesus' name, whatever I will touch, it shall be blessed. I bless my feet. Look at your feet. I bless my feet. Wherever I will go, I'll be blessed. In Jesus' name. You, my feet, you never take me to places where God does not see me. In Jesus' name. You never take me to places where I'll fall. Where I'll fall. Where I'll fall. Where I'll fall. Where I'll fail. Where I'll be disappointed. Where I'll be deceived. You never take me to places where I'll find, where I'll meet wrong people, doing wrong, doing wrong things, being at the wrong time. In Jesus' name, you my feet. You follow the path of God. You take me to places where God has established me already. You take me to places where my throne is established, where my crown will be recognized, where my glory will be acknowledged, where my glory will be seen. In Jesus' name, you take me to places where the name of Jesus will be manifest in my life. In Jesus' name, you my feet. You not take me to wrong doors. You not take me to wrong people. You take me to right doors. To divine doors. You take me to my destiny helpers. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. I pray for my documents. I speak speed. And acceleration. You my document. It is time. To cross over. To the other side, where there is success, where there is fruitfulness, where there is agreement. In Jesus' name, whatever I have applied, in whatever office, it shall be accepted. It shall be approved. In Jesus' name, whatever, what, anyone who will see my document, it will agree with me. You will love me. You will accept me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If there was someone standing or sleeping or sitting on my document, I command him out. In Jesus' name. I am free. 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 In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, as I'm praying right now, I cast out any spirit of fear. You fear, I command you out of my life. You don't have room in my life. Out of my spirit, out, out of my thought. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, any power of fear in my life, I bind it. And I command it out of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, fill my heart with your love. 
In Jesus' mighty name. Mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Amen. So we'll end up today here. God bless you. We cover your family with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Our topic today is dealing with gatekeeper. Gatekeeper. Amen? So this is a very, very big topic. We are not going to cover everything today. By God's grace, we'll see how we'll also cover it on Friday and maybe next week, depending on the way the Holy Spirit will guide us. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So the first scripture is John 10 to to three. John 10, 2 to 3. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. Amen? The one who enters into the gate. We need to understand here. There is no a place on this world where you can access without going through a gate. There is no place where you can enter, you can access without going through, passing through a gate. Each and every house has a gate. Each and every country has a gate. Each and every land has a gate. Each and every person has also his own gate. I cannot come to you and access to certain secret of your life unless if you open a gate for me. Amen. In the spiritual realm, each and every one of us has a gate. Each and every company has a gate. You cannot just present yourself and enter in a company and start working unless they've opened for you the gate. According to God's mind, the Holy Spirit is the one who opens gate. Any gate, either in your finances, a gate for marriage, a gate for children, a gate for business, a gate for uh, spiritual growth is the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that the one who opens the gate is <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he opens the gate for the shepherd because he hears the voice of the shepherd. Amen. And who is uh, the, the gate keeper? Who, the one who opens the gate is the Holy Spirit because Jesus is the shepherd and we are the sheep. Amen. We are the sheep. Jesus is the shepherd and the Holy Spirit is the gatekeeper. Praise Jesus. So the will of God is for the Holy Spirit to maintain you in a certain stature, in a certain level, so that your relationship between you and God may be clean, may be tight, may be strong. So anytime you want to go through a wrong gate, the Holy Spirit will direct you. Amen. Remember that the Bible says that you hear a voice from behind telling you, this is the way you should go. Don't go left, but go right. That voice is the voice of the gatekeeper telling you, don't take that turn. It's a wrong turn. Don't go through that other gate. It's a wrong gate. Praise Jesus. But it happens like because of certain elements that can occur in someone's life, they can prevent the Holy Spirit from keeping his gate. Hallelujah. So instead of the Holy Spirit 
keeping your gates, opening your gates, and closing your gates, there will be other spiritual entities. They will stand at your gate and start controlling who can access, who can exit. Praise Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Here there are some elements we want to see that can prevent the Holy Spirit from keeping your gates. All that can allow, all that can call, can give room to an evil gatekeeper to stand at your gate. Amen. And here the first element is sin. Say with me, sin. 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 As we know, in Romans 3, 23, the Bible says that for all have sinned and they've come short of the glory of God. Amen. They've come short. So they cannot experience the full glory of God because of sin. And I can tell you, sin will invite a demon, a fallen angel, a demonic power to stand at your gate and start keeping your gate. And sometimes it can even prevent yourself from accessing to the right, uh, the right gate. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. I can see the Lord delivering you. Amen. Amen. I can see the Holy Spirit coming and take his place, keeping your gates and protecting your gate. Hallelujah. Amen. A gate is an access point that can allow you to enter in something. Amen. In something. Sin can prevent you to enter in whatever God has meant for you. Sin can prevent, can stop the Holy Spirit from working in your life, from maintaining you in a certain door or at a certain gate. Hallelujah. So the first thing is, the first element is sin. The second one is ignorance or lack of revelation. Amen. Lack of revelation can cause a demon to keep you at a wrong door. Or can allow a demon, an evil power, a fallen angel to stand at your gate. And it will prevent you from accessing in your promised land. It can prevent you from conquering your or possessing your land. Amen. The Bible says in Hosea 4, 6, that by lack of revelation, my people perish. My people die. My people is destroyed. By lack of revelation. Amen. There are so many people who they find themselves making so much mistakes, knocking at the wrong gates. They find themselves going through wrong gates, making mistakes where they are going. By lack of revelation. Amen. By lack of revelation, there are people who died before their time. By lack of revelation, there are people who got married to wrong people. By lack of revelation, there are people who found themselves in a business with wrong partners. Praise Jesus. That is not your portion. That is not your portion. And after this prayer, I can see the Lord taking you by your right hand. Pulling you, it will establish you where it meant you to be. Hallelujah. You no longer go 
and knock at the wrong door in Jesus' mighty name. As you'll be praying, the Lord will visit you. The Holy Spirit, who is the gatekeeper, he will open your eyes. He will speak to you from behind, telling you this is the right gate you need to go through. Hallelujah. You know, though this pandemic, though, though this um, confinement season and time, the Holy Spirit is able to reveal to you things that you should do for the glory of God to manifest. The Holy Spirit can tell you, can show you the gate, the right gate you need to go through. And while people are crying, you will be smiling. Praise Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So the third thing that can prevent the Holy Spirit, who is your gatekeeper, the keeper of your soul, the keeper of your life, from manifesting all its potential, the third thing is when someone is demon-possessed. Amen. When someone is demon-possessed, he cannot see the glory of God. When someone is demon-possessed, you start making mistakes because the gatekeeper of his life is no longer the Holy Spirit, but this is a demon who will be monitoring his life, controlling his life. If that demon wants that person to go out and steal, they'll monitor him, and tomorrow he will do the same thing. Praise Jesus. Amen. You see here as an example in Luke 8, 26 to 29, the Bible said that Jesus, as he was walking, he found someone who was chained in the grave, in the graveyard. Gadara. We're talking about the, the demon-possessed man from Gadara. And the Bible says that that man was chained. And because of the state of that man, no one was going through, passing by that region. Because that man was dangerous. Oh, the, the, the demon who was keeping the gate of salvation of that man was very dangerous. Amen. So there were a demon who was keeping that graveyard, the gates of that graveyard, so, so that no one could go through that region. Amen. So there's, you find yourself, you are restricted. You cannot go out. There are things that you can do, but because of that restriction, you cannot do them. Though you have the means, but you cannot. You are restricted. You are stopped. You are hindered. Do you know why? Because in the spiritual realm, there is a gatekeeper who does not want you to go out. Remember the Bible says Jericho. Jericho was locked down. People from Jericho, they were confined. They couldn't go out. And no one could come in. Because in the spiritual realm, they were a gatekeeper of Jericho who could never allow them to go out or someone from outside to get in. Maybe where you are, you've been thinking of traveling maybe to Australia, Canada, USA, Madagascar. Name it yourself. Amen. You have the means, but you don't understand how. Anytime you're trying, nothing is happening. There is a gatekeeper who does not allow you to come out of South Africa. Praise Jesus. But I know, as you'll be praying, the power of God will come upon you. It will empower you. 
It will give you boldness and strength to stand and defeat any evil gatekeeper in your life in Jesus' mighty name. So if you see someone demon possessed, then you know that there is a gatekeeper who is preventing him from being delivered. Because a demonic and evil gatekeeper can prevent you from being healed. It can prevent your healing. It can prevent God's visitation in your life. It can prevent your deliverance, your breakthrough, your restoration. It can prevent all those. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Another element that can allow an evil gatekeeper to keep your life instead of the Holy Spirit is curse. Amen. If there is a curse over someone, then it will, all that curse will allow a demon to start monitoring him instead of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When you read 1 Samuel 2.27, you see that here is God. 1 Samuel 2.27-30. That says the Lord. Did I not feed you with build myself to the house of your father mm -hmm. when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? 29. Why do you kick at my sacrifice and my offering which I have commanded in my dwelling place? Mm -hmm. And honor your sons more, more than me. To make yourselves fat with the best of all the offerings. Offering. Israel, my people. Of Israel, my people. Hallelujah. So you can see here, Eli was uh, a high priest and his children they were mature enough to serve God in the temple. But these people, they were not serving God according to the law of God. So they used to take those nice meat and they used to serve themselves instead of serving God. And Eli, instead of rebuking his sons, but he was tolerating the evil things that his sons were doing. This is how the wrath of God came upon Eli. And you see that after that scripture, you see that after that verse, the Lord himself cursed Eli's family, saying that no one, will grow old. But people, they start dying in their young age. So that is a curse. So it means at a, at a certain age, no one can go beyond. There will be a gatekeeper who will not allow that person to go beyond that age. He will just kill him. Amen. Praise Jesus. So there are so many examples we can give you concerning curses. So let's jump to another element. The fifth one is your environment. Your environment, where you stay, where you live, where you do your activities, can prevent the Holy Spirit from keeping your gates, but can allow a demon or a fallen angel to start keeping your gates. An evil gatekeeper. Your environment. You see with Abraham in Genesis 12, the Lord said to Abraham, leave your land, leave your family, leave your country to the land that I'll show you. Why? Because the Lord saw that before he blesses Abraham, Abraham needed to come out of the system of his environment. Because where he used to live, those people, they were worshiping idols. So if you live in an environment where there are idol worshippers, they can affect your spirit. They can affect your prayer. Amen. Amen. 
they can affect your spiritual life. You need to be strong and be mandated by God for you to stand there, to stay there in order to bring salvation. Otherwise, the Lord will take you out of that system. You might die before your time. Because in a such an environment, there will be, there will always be a gatekeeper of death who can keep you from being delivered. And it will kill you before your time. That is not your portion in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Another element, the sixth one is people who surround, who surround you. Amen. They can allow or they can be the cause of a demon monitoring your life. An evil gatekeeper to monitor your life instead of the Holy Spirit. It will always happen that in your life, in your spiritual life, there will be a time where God will separate you from people who can prevent God's purposes to be fulfilled in your life. For Abraham, the Lord had to separate him from Lot. You see that when God called Abraham, he never called Lot. It's Abraham who called Lot. But the truth is, because of where he was living in that environment. So when Abraham left his family, he left and there were a, uh, uh, an evil gatekeeper who was following him. So is that gatekeeper who inspired Abraham to take his nephew, Lot, to come with his, his nephew. So you need to know that an evil gatekeeper can inspire you to do something and tomorrow it will become a snare. It will become a trap that can kill you easily. Amen. But the Holy Spirit will always inspire you something that in the future, it always gives glory to God. Praise Jesus. So, Abraham had to depart from Lord for him to see now the manifestation of God's glory. You see, after Lord has departed, then a revelation came to Abraham. Amen. And there were a covenant. Anytime you separate yourself from Lot, there will be a restoration in Jesus' mighty name. May the Lord separate you from Lot in Jesus' name. You see, Lot is someone that you love. Lot is someone that is closer to you, but he is a danger to you. In some cases, amen, is someone you love and it's not easy unless God orchestrates situations, circumstances in other things to work together for you to find yourself in a situation where you don't have a choice and you have to go. You have to leave him. Hallelujah. May the Lord provoke such situation in your life. I speak to that stubborn Lord to leave you now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord can be a thing, not only a person, but a thing. You don't know how to separate yourself from something. It can be uh, a bad habit. You don't know how to, to leave, to stop with that bad habit. As I'm praying for you now, at the sound of my voice, let that Lord listen, hear my voice, and leave you in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. I command to Lord to leave you now in Jesus' name. And I speak the word of God over your life that you are free. You are free in Jesus' mighty name. Any evil gatekeeper who was inspiring you to stay with Lot, to keep Lot, to walk along with Lot, 
I bind you in Jesus' name. I say, loose your grip over my people. Loose your grip over God's people in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. You are free in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. The same element, when you're talking about people who are surrounding you, the Bible says in Isaiah 6, from 1, Amen. The Bible says that the day King Uzziah died, I saw. So it means all this time he couldn't see properly. And you see that he was called, a, Isaiah is a prophet, he was called as a prophet. Amen. And you see from chapter 1 up to chapter 5, the kind of visions or prophecies these were prophecies of doom until king Uzziah died his eyes were opened and he could see the glory of God he could see God seated in his temple and the train of his robe was covering filling the old temple and after that, you see an angel coming, cleansing him. Hallelujah. Touching his lips with hot coals. And from there, it changed. Because you see, you, it, okay, let, let, let me read it. So I said, woe is me, mm -hmm. I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. Wait, I don't know you understand. This is a prophet of God. How come he was prophesying, yet he had an unclean lips? Amen. <laughs> he had unclean lips. The anointing of God was upon him. The mandate of God was upon him to operate as a prophet of nations. Amen. As a prophet of nations. But yet, he could acknowledge that he was living in an environment with people who had unclean lips and himself he was affected by that. Listen, it's not the anointing that can just keep you safe. If you don't know how to work on your character, you might be anointed but with a very bad character. Amen. You might be anointed but with very bad habits. Amen. So, maybe when we're talking about gatekeeper, gatekeeper, it's like a complicated word. We can understand this uh, through the scripture. The Bible says, who can enter the house of a strong man? And plunder is good, unless he does what? He binds him. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, dealing with gatekeepers is dealing with strong men. So it means strong men. Strong men. Strong men is a spirit. It's a strong spirit that prevents people from accessing in whatever God has meant for them. A strong man can prevent you from traveling, from getting married, from having your children. A strong man can stop your relationship. Amen. Amen. But the Bible says that we have the power, hallelujah. Amen. We have the power to do what? To cast out demons. We have the power to walk on serpents and scorpions. If Jesus said, all powers have been given to me. Amen. Amen. So Jesus in us, we have received all power. So you have all power to cast out demons, to bind even the strong men, because the weapon of our warfare are not carnal. Amen. They are spiritual by the virtue, by the power of God. Amen. And those weapons, they are so powerful that they can even overthrow strongholds. Amen. Destroy strongholds, altars, mountains, 
Praise Jesus. We need to pray. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Can you stand on your feet and we're going to pray? We're going to bind any strong man in your family. A strong man comes with a law. A strong man comes with regulations. A strong man, he will come with restrictions. He will put some restrictions on people. And you see, everyone starts living the same lifestyle. We need to bind him. And most of the time, when he attacks people, you find yourself, you are praying. Though you are praying, you will resist to your prayer. And the Bible, the word of God says, such spirit, such demon, it's only through prayer and fasting. I can tell you, there is no strong man who can resist to your prayer and fasting. Amen? To your prayer and fasting. So we have only one prayer point. Lord, locate the strong man of my life. The strong man in my life. Before we start praying for our families, may God locate any strong man in your life. And bind him in Jesus' name. Raise your voice and pray in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Raise your voice and pray. Father, as we are praying this evening, look at any strong man. Look at any strong man in my life, in your people's life, Lord. Look at them. In Jesus' name, we are coming in the name of Jesus. We are coming in the name of Jesus, like David who came before Goliath in the name of Jesus with five stones and a slime. Today we are coming in the name of Jesus, with the name of Jesus, with the blood of Jesus, with the power of the Holy Spirit. And we command to any strong man in our lives, we say be bound, we bound you, we bound you, we bound you, we bind you, we bind you, we bind you, we bind you, in Jesus' name. We bind you, you strong man. We bind you. In Jesus' name, you no longer kill. You no longer mislead. You no longer kill. You no longer destroy. In Jesus' name, you no longer steal. We bind you. We chain you in Jesus' name. We chain you. We bind you. We bind you. We bind you. In Jesus' name, we bind you. You no longer work. You no longer operate. In Jesus' name, we saw go down in the sand. Go down in the sand. In Jesus' name, you no longer kill. You no longer kill. Your power, your powers are prohibited. Your power, powers are prohibited. Your powers are prohibited. In Jesus' name, your time has expired. It is time for you to go. We bind you in Jesus' name. And we cast you out. 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 We say out. Out. Out of our finances. Out of our careers. Out of our families. Out. 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 In our health. Out. 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 Of our ministries out, 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 out. We say out. We command you out. We command you out. You no longer kill. You no longer kill. You no longer bow. You no longer resist. You say you no longer resist. We command you out, out of our bodies in Jesus' name. Back your stuff and go. Back and go. Back and go. Back and go. 
back and go, 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 in Jesus' name, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. The Bible says in Isaiah 45, that says the Lord, who is holding you by his right hand, whose right hand I have held. The Bible says that to subdue nation before you, to subdue strong men before you, to subdue any gatekeeper of your life, to subdue them and lose the armor of king. So no matter how, that strong man can present himself before you. No matter the armor he can wear, he can put on, in order to resist to the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord said, hallelujah, he is the one who lose the armor of the strong man, the armor of the king. Amen. So it means that gatekeeper or the strong man is operating at the level of a king, at the level of a nation. That you can see in the nation where you live, you are not prospering because there is a gatekeeper who is preventing you from accessing to the best fruit of that country, of that nation, of that land. That king is going to die. Hallelujah. Amen. The day... King Uzziah died. The eyes of the prophet were open. So you pray and say, Lord, Lord, thank you for your word. You for As I'm praying this evening, locate who is King Uzziah in my life. Locate who is the king who's trying to kill me before my time. Who is the king who's preventing me from accessing to my blessings in this nation, in Jesus' name, Lord, locate any strong man, any gatekeeper who was preventing me from accessing to God's blessings in Jesus' name. You King Uzziah, I command you to die for my eyes to be opened. I command you to die. For my blessing to manifest. I command you to die. For my career to be released. I command you to die. For my finances to be released. For my marriage to be released. For my ministry to be released. For my studies to be released. For my life to go through. And succeed. In Jesus name. I am free. I am free. Rest of us I'm praying in Jesus name. Out. 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 Any king of Zaya preventing me from reigning, ruling on my territory and my domain, I command you to die. I command you to that. I command you to disappear, to disappear. I command you to disappear. I say out of my life, out, out in Jesus' name. I am free. I am free.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I release the power of God over your life in Jesus' mighty name. Let the grace of God that can change someone's life from poverty to riches to wealth to prosperity from sickness to healing from bondage to freedom let that grace locate you in Jesus mighty name let that grace come upon you so that after this prayer your life might not be the same in Jesus' name. I speak the word of God that says it's true. Jesus stripes that we are healed. You are healed in Jesus' name. No matter the sickness you're going through, no matter the sickness you're suffering from, be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Be made whole in Jesus' mighty name. I speak life of Jesus in your bones, in your system, in your nerves, in Jesus, in your muscles, in your cells, in your blood. Hear the voice of God through my voice and be healed in Jesus' mighty name. This confinement will not kill you in Jesus' mighty name. If we can only develop a character and habit of praising God day and night, then the Lord will single you out. Then the Lord will turn around your life and you bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, and you testify. I pray for any document that was delaying. I say speed. I speak speed and acceleration. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, where you were rejected, you shall be accepted. If you're still waiting for your job to call you back, let this week, may you be called back in Jesus' name. You shall be approved. You shall be approved. In Jesus' name, within these two weeks, you come back with a testimony. This week and next week, you come back with a testimony. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. your family is covered with the blood of Jesus. Amen. The Lord is busy doing something new. Just be ready. You'll experience it in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen.